Continental Tire Coach's Corner, brought to you by Continental Tire. You'll see Continental Tire at sporting venues across the United States, including college basketball. Continental's premium products available at leading independent tire dealers, car dealers, mass retail companies across North America. For more information, visit ContinentalTire.com. Continental Tire for what you do. New head coach at Texas, formerly of Houston. He's Tom Herman back on the program. Coach, congratulations. Where are you this morning? Uh, I'm, I'm at my office right now in, in Austin, uh, getting ready to, to hit the road recruiting. What's in the office right now? <laughs> uh, not a whole lot. Uh, there's a few pictures, a few trophies uh, in the office, but uh, there's not a whole lot. Me and uh, my wife, we got a, our, our jobs ahead of us to, to decorate it. When did you agree to the Texas job? Oh boy, like uh, four in the morning on Saturday morning. So Saturday morning, okay. Sunday morning or Saturday morning? Saturday. It was uh, the the it was Saturday morning because uh, we had uh, played that day, that Friday. Why four in the morning? Uh, <laughs> well, if the, the, you know the timeline is that important. Um, we can, uh, you know, I got a phone call when we landed from uh, the Memphis game and um, said that uh, some people from Texas wanted to meet with me. And uh, so the meeting didn't start till about uh, 1030 at night and uh, went uh, that long uh, to, to figure something out. I know we talked during the season twice about this, um, and, and it's, a, it's a dangerous game we play. It's a tightrope you guys have to walk. And there's nothing wrong with getting another job, a better job, or bigger job. And I certainly understand that. But the comments after the Memphis game where you're telling a reporter that don't believe any of this, were you being sincere at the time? Yeah, the, the, all of the reports that were, that were out, that were floating around at the time, it was before the Memphis game, but not after. And every single report that was floating out at that time was inaccurate. So um, I... I was not lying. I felt very comfortable saying that. What about the LSU opportunity? Did they reach out to you? Yeah, I, you know, and, and not to, to skirt the question, I just I, I don't know um, that how we got here is, is relevant. What's really relevant is that we're here now, Dan, and, and um, excited about moving forward, excited about the kids in the locker room, excited about getting on the road recruiting. So, um, you know, th- th- there's a lot of things that, that happen that – that have been reported and, and that did or didn't happen. But, I, you know, at the end of the day, I, I don't know how any of that is, is relevant. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm great uh, with the team at Houston. I, I never once lied to them. I never told them anything uh, that, was, that was false. And so uh, those are the only people that, that I need to make my peace with. And uh, I've done that. I've, I've gotten numerous phone calls and texts, all positive uh, from uh, my former players at, at the University of Houston and from uh, boosters and, and administration there. And so uh, I've, I've moved on, I've, and I think, you know, I think it's smart for everybody else to, too. Well, I understand. I'm just fascinated with the process here because it, it puts you in a difficult position. That's all. And I don't know if there's a way to make the process better um, other than saying, having complete honesty and saying, look, I'm exploring other jobs while I'm coaching here, or, you know, you're not the, you're not the first coach and you're not the last coach, but I, I, it yeah, is a and, dangerous and, position and, there. Yeah, it is. And, and they all, they all twist and turn in different ways too. But, uh, you know, I, I think again, and, and I guess for advice for anybody, you're right. I'm not the last coach that this will happen to, but, um, you know, as long as you're honest with your players and your, the, the team, I, I think, I think you're good. And, you know, you don't need to tell the media everything. You don't need to tell, um, you know, Joe fan everything. Yep. As long as you're honest with your teammates or uh, with your team uh, and your coaches, I, I think you can put your head down on the pillow at night and rest easy. Did you have to sell yourself to Texas or the other way around? Oh, I think there was a little bit of both, to to be honest with you. I, my My biggest thing, I wanted to know, um, their vision for Texas football and, and moving forward. I wanted to know President Fenvis's and, and Mike Perrin, the athletic director. I wanted to know um, if their vision for Texas football aligned with mine. And um, through those talks, 
uh, I came away uh, very convinced that, that that will be the case, that we will be aligned together uh, in what we need in terms of uh, resources and um, support uh, to bring Texas football back to, to its rightful place uh, among the, the college football elite. Going back to what I asked you a couple of weeks ago, if Houston makes the Big 12, my gut feeling was you'd stay. Now, I don't know if that's you know true or not, but was that a curveball in the whole process here? I'm not sure. You know, I, I, it's again, it's, it's so hypothetical. I, I I don't know that I ever gave it. But it was uh, close, though. I mean, there was discussions of you guys. Oh, joining. yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it, it didn't. I never thought about you know how this is going to affect whether I stay at Houston or not. Okay. Uh, that, that that never really crossed my mind. How do you sell Texas after what's happened the last three years? Well, you sell it as, um, you know, we're the flagship uh, university for the, the greatest football playing state uh, in our country. And uh, we've won multiple national championships. We've played for multiple national championships. We've won conference championships. And uh, we, we've got some, some young talent on the team that, that needs uh, some direction. And, uh, you know, but to sell it to recruits, it, I mean, it's easy. We've got the, you know, some of the best facilities in the country. We've got some of the best fans. We, we've got a great education here at the University of Texas to sell them and, and a great city in Austin. So uh, the recruiting will not be hard uh, at the University of Texas. We will uh, you know, continue. We've got uh, so much experience recruiting the state of Texas and such good relationships with the high school coaches here that uh, selling this place uh, will not be difficult. Now, we need to, we need to stay um, competitive with the, you know, with the elite teams in the country, the Alabamas, the Ohio States, the, the Clemsons of the world in terms of our facilities and, and uh, our resources and support staff and recruiting staff and all that. But um, at the end of the day, we're still the University of Texas. And um, uh, with this plan and this vision and, and uh, you know, what we're going to be able to do, we're, we're going to win a bunch of championships uh, while we're here. You took the job at four in the morning. Did you have to wake your wife or was she already awake? No, she, uh, she was on the phone as, as we were talking about it. And so, you know, I'm not DP. I don't know about you, man, but I'm not going to make any decision like that without, <laughs> without, without calling her and making sure she's good with it. So she, she was on the phone. Uh, I did, I woke her up uh, with the phone call, but, but she was on the phone, you know, uh, pretty much the last you know 45 minutes to, to an hour. What are you doing with your, What are you doing with your uh, Houston gear? Ha. Uh, I, I I don't know. You know, any any time uh, you, you change jobs, you know, this is not the the first time I've changed jobs. So um, usually try to give it to you know the as good a fans uh, you know that that to become close to or or some have a yard uh, sale. You know, have a tag sale. Have your wife have a tag sale. Yeah, you know, I, when I was a GA and I, I left. Texas uh, back in 2000, I actually did because I needed the money. But I, you know, I, I just think uh, giving it to, to people that deserve it, and, and even uh, giving it to, to kids and, and organizations that can better use it is, is better than trying to trying to put a price tag on it and selling it. How much did you make as a grad assistant? I made four hundred dollars a month and uh, trying to live in Austin, Texas. My wife uh, was working back in Los Angeles. Uh, she was my fiance at the time, and she. She would, um, you know, send me money to help pay rent. So, yeah, four four hundred bucks a month, DP. You've made four hundred dollars since you got on the phone call here with me. <laughs> I, I haven't done the math, so <laughs> if you can do the math that quick, that's pretty impressive. Uh, good luck on the recruiting trail, and uh, we appreciate you joining us. And congrats on the job. All right, DP. Appreciate you having me. Hey, that's uh, Tom. Tom Herman. He's hooking them already. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.